Alright, so today what we're going to do is we are going to do the very first DBQ of the year. Now I'm going to tell you we're going to do a lot of DBQs, at least one per unit. Uh, but for this one, all you are going to have to do is just follow along with me and make the same notes on your paper on as mine does. Okay, so I'm just teaching you how we're going to do this instead of just throwing you all right in there. Uh, so let's talk about DBQ. So first off, what does DBQ mean? DBQ means document based questions. So in this class, what we're going to do is we are going to get documents like this and we are going to try to answer these questions. So for this DBQ, we're talking about Jamestown and we're going to answer the question of why did so many colonists die? Okay, so think Thinking back to our Jamestown lesson, we do know that at least half of our Jamestown colonists died during that first winter called the starving time. So what we're going to do is we are going to look at this document and we are going to figure out the exact reasons why they died. Um, now, before we get into the actual document, what we have to do is we have to source it out. Now, I've already made a few little notes on mine. I boxed source because this is the most important thing. This is the first thing you are going to look at when you get these documents. Okay, then I also went ahead and I broke up this sentence right here. Now, you are going to get so much information from this one little sentence, and all I did is that every little comma pretty much that we see, I went ahead and drew a line so we can separate it out. Okay, so go to your page here. This is our analysis sheet. So this is where we're going to put all of our ideas and the thing, the uh, ideas that we are going to generate from these documents. Now this box right here, all of this comes from the source. So all of this right here, you're going to find all of the answers right here in this first little source sentence. Okay, so let's fill this out. So we have document number or letter. Well, we're talking about document A, so you're just gonna put a little A right there. Okay, then we need the title of document if it's present. Now, not all doc documents are going to have a title. Uh, this one does, however, it is called Jamestown Environment. The titles are usually right after the author. It's usually the second thing. So we have a title, it is Jamestown's Environment. So all we're gonna do is we're gonna write that right in here. All right, so we have Jamestown environment. Except I spelled that wrong. I'm sorry, guys. There's supposed to be an N right there in between the E and the V. Okay, so then our next little box that we have is date of document. Okay, so the date is always going to be the very last thing in this source. Okay, so for us on this document, it is 2000. So this was created in the year 2000. Then over here, we need to ask ourselves, is this a primary source or is this a secondary source? Now, primary source, this, remember, that means someone was there, they witnessed it, they saw it with their own eyes, and they wrote down their experiences. Secondary source means it was written by someone who did not witness it, and they're just writing what they think happened, basically. Uh, so if we know this was written in 2000, and we know Jamestown was founded in 1607, uh, we can probably guess that this is a secondary source because there, there's no one alive today who was there at Jamestown to be writing it in 2000, okay? Next, we have our source or where this document comes from. You can usually find that as the third thing in our source. So it came from the Center for Archaeological Research, the College of William and Mary. So all we're going to do is we're going to put all of that right in this box right here. All right, so we have where it comes from. Now we need the author of the document. The author of the document is always going to be the very first thing that we see. So for this document, it is Dennis B. Blanton. 
So we're just going to write his name right here. Okay, and then finally, we need to get our possible author bias or their point of view. Now, usually in documents, you're going to see a note somewhere on here. So either up here, there will be a little note and it'll give us extra information. Or down here, there will be a note and it'll give us more information. Now, for this one, there is no more information that we really need. Um, we do know that this is a secondary source. Um, it was written in 2000. There's really no reason for someone to lie to us. So for the most part, if it is a secondary source, we're going to say that there is no author bias. Now, this is not always the case, but I can tell you for this document that there is no author bias. They're just telling us the truth. They're not trying to lie to us. Okay, so after we have filled out our, doc our source part, what we're going to do is we're going to go back to our document and we are going to read through this, okay? But before we do that, I want to tell us we're going to have this one little word, this word right here, it says brackish. I just wanted to kind of tell y'all what it meant. And all brackish means is it means that salt salt water mixed with fresh water. Okay, so this is going to be water that you can't actually drink anymore because it is it has salt water in it and you and it's just bad stuff. All right, so what we're going to do is we are going to read through this, read our document and then we'll go back to our next page. So Many people have commented over the last four centuries on the qualities of Jamestown's environment. Because the adjacent river and creeks became brackish as water levels rose, reliable sources of fresh water would have been scarce by the 17th century. English colonists dug shallow wells to supply themselves with sources of drinking water, but they were vulnerable to drought and salt water intrusion. Also, historian Carvel V. Earle attributed disease in the early years to Jamestown's position at the salt fresh water transition, where filth introduced into the river tended to fester rather than flush away. The island is not situated at a point of great natural food abundance, especially relative to other locations very close by. Fish are present in local streams, but only in the spring and early summer are there in are they there in impressive abundance? Okay, so now that we have read our document, what we're going to do is we are going to go over to this page. Now, we've done our source part. Now we need to do fill out this part, and we fill this part out after we have already read the document. Now, when we fill this out, there is a certain amount of things that need to go in each one of these boxes. And I like to do it just as a simple three, two, one. So we need three things to go in this box. We need two things in this one. And then this final one is just one sentence. You're gonna help answer the question. Okay, so what we know how many things we're gonna put in each one. Now let's talk about what we put in each one. So in this one right here, we need important details that are included in the document. This box right here, this is going to be your evidence. This is going to be what you see. Okay, so these are going to be our actual evidence. What did the document tell us? We're going to put details from the document in that box. This one, on the other hand, is what inference can you make based on these details? So we're going to take what we see, our, our evidence, and then we're going to translate it into what does it mean when we answer the question, why did so many colonists die? Okay, so in this box, I like to call this what it means. Okay, so this is what it means. This is our evidence. This is what the evidence means for us. And in this one is how does this document help answer the question? Well, instead of how does it help us, we are just going to answer the document, or the, not the document, we're gonna answer the question. Okay, so those are the things that go in these three boxes. Okay, so let's start with this box. What are the important details that are included? Now remember, 
we're trying to answer the question, why did so many colonists die? So when we're going back through this document, we want to know, we need to find in, important details that are gonna help us answer this question. So first thing I see, and I'm gonna use a highlighter to highlight this. Now you can underline it, you can circle it, you can do whatever you want with it, but we just have to make sure that we know we're getting information from here. So my first thing that I would probably say is the most important for the reason why they probably died is that they were in a bad position, right? So the position at the salt water and the salt water fresh water transition, we had filth introduced into the river and it tended to fester then rather flush away. Okay? So we're just going to put, so this is our first little detail that we're going to get. We're going to put a number one. That way when you get over to here, I know exactly where you got this from. Now, when we do this, we can't just put the direct quote because when we go and write our short answer, you can't write a quote from the document. You have to put this quote in our own words. So we need to tell us what they're saying right here. So we know that the position at the saltwater, freshwater, transition filth was introduced into the river it tended to fester rather than flush away so we could say so we're going to number it we're going to number one so we could say um we can say because of their position at the transition of salt to fresh water on the river the water tended to keep filth instead of keeping clean water. Now, I know that's a really long sentence, right? But does this say the same thing as that? Yes, because of the position at the transition of salt to fresh water on the river, the water tended to keep filth instead of keeping clean water. Okay, so we know exactly what it is. Those are in our own words. That way we don't have to worry about plagiarism or anything like that. Okay, so next we have number two. So now we need another detail in here. Okay, so our next detail is going to be that down here in this one. So we see that they, um, the island was not situated at a point of great natural food abundance. Okay, so they don't have a lot of food. And they uh, were relative to other, like there were other locations that would have been better that were very close by, but they didn't choose those. And then we have fish are present in the local streams, but only in the spring and early summer are there an impressive abundance. Okay, so we can say that we can say that the island is not situated on a point of natural great food abundance. We can say fish are present, but only in the spring and early summer, right? So all of that is going to be for number two. So, first off, they have poor water. They don't have water that'll stay clean. And now, they don't have enough food and they don't have a lot of area that they can have a lot of food. So, what we're going to write for number two, we're gonna say there wasn't a large food supply 
near the colony. And then we put a period because that's the end of that thought, right? Then we have fish were only present during the spring and summer. Okay, so we know they don't have great water, they don't have great food. Now we need a third reason. Third reason for the reason why they, 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 they died in that first winter. Okay, so I'm looking through here. Let's talk about up here. So we know that they, right here it says English colonists dug shallow wells to supply themselves with sources of drinking water, but they were vulnerable to drought and salt water intrusion. So even though they created these wells, they can't really, they don't really have a sustainable drinking, the like water source basically so all we're going to do is we're just going to highlight english colonists dug shallow wells to supply themselves with sources of drinking water but they're vulnerable to drought and salt water intrusion okay so all i'm going to do is i'm just going to put a little note i'm going to make a three because i know that that is what my third thing that i got from this document so let's write it in here all right, so we have uh, colonists made wells uh, for water. However, they had problems with Sprout and salt water. All right, so now we have our three little details. So we know that they are in a poor location because the, the fresh water and the salt water are mixing and they're, it's going to keep filth in it instead of keeping the water clean. We know that they don't have a large food supply nearby the colony and that fish are only present during the spring and summer. And then colonists made wells for water. However, they had problems with drought and salt water. So now we need to tell ourselves, okay, well, what does this mean? We have all of these things happening we know these things so what does this mean for our question which we don't have the question on that one uh, my bad our question is right here so why did so many colonists die okay so we need to figure out reasons why so let's read all of these so we have the poor place we have not a lot of food we don't have drinkable water okay could we make the inference that our colonists struggle to get supplies such as water and food we can okay our colonists they struggled a lot they struggled to get supplies such as food and water okay do you need food and water to survive yes you absolutely need food and water in order to survive so because these things happen we know that they probably struggled with this and if you struggle with food and water you're probably not going to survive okay what's another thing that we can uh determine based off of this their water's not clean if you're drinking unclean water what's probably going to happen well you're probably going to get sick right so could we make the inference that they have to deal with a lot of diseases because they are drinking bad water probably so we could probably make the inference that our colonists our colonists health was 
poor due to diseases in the water. Now, with both of these inferences, did I say word for word that over there? No. I said that we have a poor position on the river. Okay, I also said that food wasn't around. We also said that their wells and drinking waters had a lot of problems. Okay, we didn't say that they struggled, but we can make the inference that they struggled with getting food and water. We can also make the inference that their health was bad because the water is going to keep this filth instead of keeping clean water. Okay, so that's when over here you're going to come up with inferences. And remember that inference is something that is a conclusion that we make based off of information that we already have. All right, so now we are almost done with that. We need to answer this box. We need to answer how does this document help answer the question. So basically what we need to do is we need to answer the question. Now for this one, I'm always going to give you a sentence stem. So we're going to say, um, we are going to say many colonists died at Jamestown because. So that is your sentence stem. So we need to finish this sentence. So many colonists died at Jamestown because, well, they probably died because they lacked food and water and there were diseases, right? Is that what we decided up here? It is. So when you are doing your DBQs, you can always take this box and form it into a sentence down here. So all this is doing is it's just helping us organize our thoughts. Okay, so many colonists died at Jamestown because there was a lack of food and water and there were diseases okay so we have answered our question many colonists died at jamestown because there was a lack of food and water and there were diseases okay now next two little boxes they're super simple overall what is the main idea of this document okay what was this document trying to tell us well it was probably trying to tell us that they just don't have access to a lot of resources based off of their location. So we can say Jamestown lacked the proper resources to form a colony. Okay, and then finally we have our analytical bucket. For today, you're not dealing with this, so you can just cross that out. We're not dealing with this today. When we do our other DBQs and we have multiple documents that we're going to do, we're actually going to categorize them into different uh, categories. But since we only have one, we don't need to do that today. All right, so that is how we fill out this piece of paper. Now it looks like a lot, but it wasn't really that bad.